All right, so let's take a look at um, section 4.2. We'll split this one over um, two days. Okay, it's a lot of graphing, and we're going to look at two different cases. Um, one case, we'll look at graphing where your polynomial has a bigger degree in the top, and then we'll look at the other case where it's bigger in the, um, in the bottom. Okay, so one thing that's important to um, keep in mind when we're graphing is that if you have a common factor in the top and the bottom, that's when you get a hole. Okay? You don't get an asymptote. Okay, so if you have a common factor in the top and the bottom, that's when you get a, a hole. And the problem with that is you can't see it on the calculator. So don't rely on just graphing it and looking at that to try to find a hole. Okay, you have to do the algebra factor the problem, and that's the only way you can tell. Okay, so as an example, I'll graph um, this one. f of x equals x minus 1 over x minus 1. So 1 is going to be a value that's not in the domain. Is there going to be a hole at 1 or an asymptote? There's going to be a hole, right? In this case, because you have a common factor in the top and in the bottom. Okay, so basically it looks like the line y equals 1, because if you divide two things that are the same, they cancel out and you get 1. But what we can't see is if we trace over to 1, the y value isn't there, because it's undefined. If you looked at it in the table and you went to 1, it would say error. You can get as close to 1 as you want on either side. Uh, second table. So you can type in point. 9999999, very, very close to 1, and it's fine. Or another value extremely close. You just can't use the value 1. Okay, so that's, that's what that one looks like. It's, uh, so let me just put that graph back so you can see it. Um, what about if I graph this one? Would there be a vertical asymptote at 1 or a hole? You think, Trevor, what do you think? So asymptote meaning that the numerator and denominator do not have any common factors? Yeah, it's a hole. Yep, so there are common factors in the top and the bottom again. Um, okay. What this one's going to look like um, is basically you've got two copies of x minus 1 in the top. You've got one in the bottom. So one of the copies is going to cancel out. And this is going to look like a line with a slope of 1, y-intercept 1, except it's not a line okay? because there's a hole in it. Okay. So that's, that's what this one looks like. Okay, any questions on that? Now, if you wanted to create an asymptote, all you have to do is change one of those values from like a minus 1, make it a minus 2 in the bottom. And then you'd, you'd, get, a, you'd get an asymptote. Okay, so in that example, there were no vertical asymptotes. What we had there is a discontinuity that's so small, we call it, it's a hole, also called a removable discontinuity. Basically, what that means is that if you were to just redefine your function at that one specific value, you could make it a continuous function. Right? So for example, I could take, um, take my function, make it a piecewise function, and say, you can use this formula as long as x is not equal to 1. Okay, so I want you to graph that anytime x is not equal to 1. And if x is equal to 1, then I want you to graph that. Okay, so what's that saying is, is it says graph the line y equals 1 
as long as it's x is not equal to 1. And then if it is equal to 1, I want you to just graph the single point 1, 1. Okay, so now if you were to graph something like this, that is a continuous function. Okay, what I basically did is in the second part, I redefined uh, my function where I had a problem. Okay, that's all I did. We're not going to really do a lot of that, but I'm just showing you that that's what a removable discontinuity is. Okay, you can redefine your function at one particular point, or maybe two. If you had two holes, you could redefine it in two spots so the discontinuity doesn't occur. Okay, any questions on that? So next thing we're going to look at is um, a concept we've done before, end behavior model, except now we're going to look at it as in terms of a rational function. Okay. So if you have a polynomial in the top of your fraction and in the bottom, that's all that those represent, polynomials with coefficients in descending order, this is the end behavior model for the top. Okay, remember, you, all you have to do is look at the leading term, look at the um, coefficient. If it's positive or negative, that tells you something. And then if the exponent is even or odd, that tells you something else. Okay, between those two things, that gives you your end behavior. Okay, and same thing in the bottom. If you were looking at the bottom polynomial and you wanted to know what's the end behavior model for the bottom, it's just the leading term. Okay, again, b sub m would tell you whether or not the function is going to open. Um, well, actually, you have to look at the exponent, too. So if it's positive or negative, remember all the cases we had? Positive coefficient, even exponent, would have end behavior that looks like this. Might do some twists and turns in the middle, but even exponent positive coefficient, think of that as like a parabola. It's up, <coughs> up. If you had an even exponent with a negative coefficient, that would look more like this, down and down. Okay. When you get into odd exponents, that's when you have one of each. So I know how to find an end behavior model for just the top and just the bottom. So what do you think I would do with both of these if I want an end behavior model for f of x, the whole thing, what would I do with the end behavior model for the top and then the one for the bottom? About Andrew? Yeah, basically you just divide them. That's all you have to do. Okay. So, when x starts to get really, really big, whether it's positive or negative, doesn't matter, this is basically what your polynomial is going to look like. All those other little terms don't matter. Okay? If you're going to zoom way out and look at the big picture, take the leading term in the top, divide by the leading term in the bottom. Now, you're dividing two things, and you have the same base, x and x. Does anyone remember what you do with exponents? when you divide two things with the same base? <coughs> you subtract them. Okay. So what ends up happening is you can divide the two numbers you have in front, okay. a sub n and b sub m, those will be numbers. Okay. So divide those, and then do x to the n minus m. So if you had like an x cubed divided by x, x cubed divided by x, that's a 3 minus a 1, turns into an x squared. So you just subtract your exponents. And that's your end behavior model, which I'll call EBM, for the rational function. So it's like the same thing we've done before, except you've got to find it in the top, find it in the bottom, and then divide them. Okay, any questions on that? 
And that will help us when we have to graph, too. Finding the EBM is one of the, the things that we, we try to figure out. All right, so for this one, I want to just find the end behavior model and any horizontal asymptotes. Now, basically, if you can find the end behavior model, that will give you the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, that's, that's the trick. So let's start with the EBM. Okay, what's my highest degree term in the top? 2x two squared. Two squared. And what about the highest degree term in the bottom? 3x cubed. And now just reduce when here, so when we're done, we should not have x's in both the top and the bottom. Okay, it should only be an x either in the top or in the bottom. So we're going to end up with 2 thirds for my number. And where are my x's going to end up when I'm done, in the top or in the bottom? It's going to end up in the bottom. How many x's in the bottom? Just one. Okay, you can think of this as 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. But if you have a negative exponent, negative exponents mean they go in the bottom. Okay? So we get 2 divided by 3x. Okay? That's your end behavior model. Now, to find the horizontal asymptote, basically, I'll write how to do it. Okay? Take the end behavior model. And let x get really big. Okay? That'll tell you what's going to happen. Okay? None of these other terms matter. Okay? In terms of, if you take a number and cube it versus taking a number and doubling it, doubling it almost has no effect in terms of cubing. Okay? If you compare the two, like take the number you know, 5 and cube it, you get 125. Take the number 5 and double it, it's 10. Okay? So the 2x and the plus 1 are so small. They don't, they don't even matter in the big picture. Okay, that's why we can do what we're doing. So to find your horizontal asymptotes, we're looking at the, the big picture. So take your end behavior model and let x basically approach infinity. And negative infinity. Okay, so I'm not going to write the directions on how to do it every time. From now on, I'll just write horizontal asymptote, y equals, and then write my number. Okay, what does this fraction approach, 2 over 3x, if you let x get bigger and bigger? It gets yep, it gets smaller and smaller. And what number does it approach? about Zach? Do you see what, what number that would approach? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. So we're going to let, let x get bigger and bigger in that fraction. Okay? If you have to do it, do it out in your head. Like let x be 1,000 and tell me the answer when you do this out. What would it start to get very close to? Uh, zero. Yeah. Okay? If x is 1,000, that's 2 divided by 3,000. It's a very, very small positive number. Okay? If you let x be a million, okay? 2 divided by 3 million, even smaller positive number. Okay? But it'll never reach 0. Okay? So that's where my horizontal asymptote is. y equals 0. Now, what would happen if the x was in the top? Would my... Um, would my horizontal asymptote still be 0 if the x ended up in the top? Well, Quinn, what do you think? What would happen if you had an x that ended up in the top? You know, something like 5x over 3. As you let x get bigger and bigger in that fraction, what happens? Uh, it right, that approaches infinity. All right, so when we have a degree in the top that's bigger than what's in the bottom, um, we don't have 
this horizontal asymptote. Okay? Generally, you start to get different kinds of asymptotes. Okay? And I hinted on it a little from the homework. Maybe a slant asymptote or even curved. All right? So most of the ones we do today, we're either going to have a degree in the top that's smaller or maybe equal. All right, so let's find our end behavior model here. All right, so Ayla, what would be the um, fraction I would set up to find my end behavior model? 2x to the 4th over 3x. 2x to the 4th over 3x to the 4th. And when you reduce that, what do you get? It's just two thirds, because if you subtract the exponents, you get x to the zero power, which is just one. Okay, so we just end up with two thirds times one. We can just write two thirds. So what's happening this time is my function is approaching a constant that's not zero. Okay, it's still approaching a number. It's approaching two thirds. It's not approaching zero. So now, if you let x get bigger and bigger in this fraction, what does that fraction approach? Yep. It approaches 2 thirds. Okay? There is no x in that fraction. It's a constant. Okay? So your horizontal asymptote in this case would be at y equals 2 thirds. So anytime the degree in the top and the degree in the bottom are the same, you're going to, approach, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. And it's going to be a constant that's not 0. Okay? It's going to be whatever the leading terms were divided. Whenever the degree in the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom, you will always have a horizontal asymptote at 0. Okay? Always. Okay? So that's how you can tell whether your horizontal asymptote is at 0 or at a number that's not 0. And as I already said, if you get into a case where the degree in the top is bigger, then you don't have a horizontal asymptote anymore. It starts to turn into a more complicated asymptote. Okay, so we're going to focus on just sketching the problems where the degree in the numerator is less than or equal to the degree in the denominator. Okay, and there's a few hints I have for finding um, or trying to figure out your graph. Okay, you can try to find your intercepts, both your x and your y intercept. This doesn't always work because your graph might not always cross an axis. Okay, think of the graph 1 over x. It looks like this. It doesn't cross the x or the y axis ever. So finding intercepts on that particular graph would not be helpful. Okay, but sometimes finding intercepts is helpful. Okay, we always want to find our vertical asymptotes. Okay, that's your zeros of the denominator, as long as you don't have common factors. So zeros of the denominator, as long as there are no common factors. What happens again if you do have a common factor? You get a hole instead. Okay, so try to find intercepts, try to find your vertical asymptotes. And then we'll find our end behavior model, and that's going to lead to the horizontal asymptote. Okay, for today, your end behavior model is always either going to be a constant, let's see, or it's going to be a fraction with an x in the bottom. You will never get an end behavior model today with an x in the top because of this right there. Okay, you're always going to be left with x's in the bottom or the x's are just going to disappear. And then what we like to do is just what I was showing you yesterday. Check the behavior on each, each side of the vertical asymptote. Okay, so if you had a vertical asymptote at 2, 
I want you to plug in a value for x just a little bigger than 2, like 2.01, and a little smaller than 2, like 1.99. Okay? And that's going to tell you, basically, on each side of the vertical asymptote, what is happening. On one side, you should be at infinity. On the other side, you should be at negative infinity. If you're not, uh, then it's not a vertical asymptote. Some, something's wrong. And you can always confirm what you did by hand by looking at it on a graphing calculator. All right, so now we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time trying to um, graph some rational functions. Okay, I don't necessarily do these steps in this order. Um, graphing calculator I usually do last, looking at the picture. Um, but I like to find all the asymptotes first. And if I can find intercepts, I will, but I can't always do it. All right, so let's try to sketch this graph. Now, the way this one is written, it makes it a little hard to figure out the zeros of the denominator. So what could I do to rewrite that a little bit to make the zeros of the denominator a little easier to see? Oh, Tom? Perfect, yeah, we just want to factor it. Okay, so if we, um, if we factor it, it's going to make it very easy to find the, the roots, and it's going to make it easy to see if we have any common factor with the top. Um, so, Tom, can you tell me how that would, um, how that would factor? Um, plus and a minus. Yep, you're going to need a plus and a minus. Two numbers that multiply to give me 6 and subtract to give me negative 1. 2 and 3. Two and three. So I'm going to do it like that. So I get minus 3 plus 2. There's my minus 1. It's perfect. We factored it. Do I have any common factors in the top and the bottom? Nope. So I'm going to have all asymptotes here. So let's find the vertical asymptotes. What are my two vertical asymptotes? Amanda? Positive, um, negative 2 and 3. Okay. Negative 2 and 3. So let's... Let's draw those in um, right now. x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 3. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my end behavior model, which will then give me my horizontal asymptote. Okay, Molly, what's the highest degree term in the top? And in the bottom? Uh, X and if you reduce that, what do you get? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. mm -hmm. oh, like, oh, well, you get a negative, right? Like, for x squared? Does that make sense? What do you mean? You, a negative? Wait, do you have to do, you have to do, like, x minus um, like, if you're thinking of minus, like you're subtracting exponents, you get a negative. Yeah. So what would that mean I get for my in behavior model? Not sure. Can anyone help her out? What's, you could think of subtracting the exponents and you get a negative, but when we write the final answer, I prefer it without negative exponents. Yep. One over. Yeah, it's x to the negative 1 or 1 over x. Now, let x get really big in that fraction, and that's your horizontal asymptote. So what does this fraction approach as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, either positive or negative? Yep. Zero. It approaches 0. So I have a horizontal asymptote at 0. Now, let's see if I can find my x-intercepts. So to get my x-intercept, that's when you set y equal to 0. So if you set a fraction equal to 0, what's the only way a fraction ever equals 0? Yeah, yeah. If the top equals 0. 
So the only way that y is ever going to equal 0 is if the top equals 0. Okay? And I don't really care about the bottom. As long as the value that makes the top 0 doesn't also make the bottom 0. Because if that happens, that, that's a problem. Okay? But if I look at it, what value makes the top 0? 1. So this graph is going to cross the x-axis. My x-intercept is at 1. Just a point to help me when I start sketching my curve. And if I wanted my y-intercept, that's when you let x equal 0. So if I fill 0 in for x, what do I get in the top? Negative 1 divided by, if I fill 0 in in the bottom, what's 0 squared? Zero. Minus 0? Zero? Minus 6. All right, so I get negative 1 6. So this crosses the y-axis at 1 6. So those points are so close, that doesn't really help me a lot. But I, I did find both my intercepts. Now the last thing I'm going to do is check the behavior on each side of the asymptote. Um, to do that, just to speed the arithmetic up, I'll use the calculator. So I've got x minus 1 divided by x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, my first, um, first asymptote was negative 2. What's a value just to the left of negative 2? Yeah, negative 2.01. Sure. So as you get closer and closer to negative 2 on the left, you can see your graph is down at negative infinity. So we're way down there. Okay. What's a value um, just to the right of negative 2? Yeah, let's see what happens there. Now, you should always be down at a negative infinity on one side, and you should be up at a positive infinity on the other. I'm just confirming that I am. All right, now let's check our other asymptote. That was at 3. Um, Kayla, what's a value just a little smaller than 3? Yeah, let's check 2.99. And want to go even closer to check, you can see 2.999, you're way down at negative 400. And Quinn, what's a value just on the other side of that asymptote? 1.001. Sure, 3 point, I put an extra zero, but I can see I'm way up at 4,000. All right, so now I got all those points. That should be enough to make my picture. Okay, this is going to be in three sections. We know that as we go further and further out, we're approaching zero. That's the horizontal asymptote. So let's look at, at that first. Okay. Approaching zero. Okay, so I have to stay in this upper right section. I can't cross those dotted lines. So this one has to look something kind of like that. Now the same thing is going to happen in this lower left section. It's going to have to get closer and closer to this asymptote. But then all of a sudden it has to get closer and closer to another asymptote. And it can't, it can't cross it. So the only thing left is to see what happens in the middle. Well, um, I've got a point way down here. I've got a point way up here. And I've got a couple points in the middle. So just connect them all. And remember, it's, it's kind of curved. So you have to get closer and closer here, go through these two points, and then get closer and closer there. And that's what your graph will look like. But we can always double check it just by hitting graph. Check out the picture. And that's pretty much exactly what, what we did. I think. The graph on the calculator looks a little flatter in the middle, but I, what we drew is perfect. It's, don't worry about that. Okay, so any questions on that?
That's the process for pretty much every problem. Okay. Find all your asymptotes, check out the end behavior, try some points on each side, and then connect everything with smooth curves, never crossing the asymptote lines. All right, let's try this one. Okay, on a sketch of graph, find our asymptotes, our intercepts. Um, didn't leave a spot for end behavior model, but we'll do that when we do the horizontal asymptote, because that's, that's what helps you find it. All right, um, anybody see something I could do with, um, <coughs> with the bottom? Make that a little, little easier to work with. Yeah, Ali? So you got x times 2x minus 5. Perfect. Now in the top, um, is that factorable? 3x squared plus x minus 4? If you tried, tried to factor it, two numbers that multiply to give me, well, I know it's got to be a plus and a minus. Um, if you tried something like a, like a 2 and a 2, um, that's not going to work. I know I'm not going to have a common factor in the top and the bottom, okay? Because there's no way the top is going to have a 2x as one of the terms in the factor because you're trying to get a 3x. So you could try 3x and x. That's all that you would have. You would never even try 2x. So you don't have a common factor. Okay, so we'll just, just leave the top the same. 3x squared plus x minus 4. So what values would make the denominator zero? Yep, zero is one of them. And what about the other one? Five halves or 2.5? Those are my vertical asymptotes. And now my horizontal asymptotes. Let's start by finding the end behavior model. And I think to do the EBM, it's easier to go back to the original. Okay. Look at the highest degree term in the top and in the bottom. Um, how about, Taylor, what's the highest degree term in the top? Uh, 3x squared. Okay. And Grace in the highest degree term in the bottom? 2x squared. 2x squared. And when I divide these, the x squareds cancel out. And that is my end behavior model. It's a constant, 3 halves. So, as you let x get bigger and bigger in that fraction I just circled, what does that fraction approach? It approaches three halves. There's, there's no x. It never changes. Okay, so we've got our vertical asymptotes. We've got our horizontal asymptote. Um, what else do they want? x-intercept. Um, All right, I could find the x-intercept if I wanted. It's basically just set the numerator equal to 0. And I could use the quadratic formula to solve it. But I'm not going to worry as much about the x-intercept this time. Um, the y-intercept I can do really quick. Just let x equal 0. Okay, what's 0 squared times 3 plus 0 minus 4? All right, so my y-intercept is negative 4 over... Well, 0 squared times 2 is 0, minus 5 times 0 is 0. So what do I get in the denominator? I get a 0. So what does that mean about my y-intercept? It's undefined. It doesn't have a y-intercept. Okay. So this graph will never cross the y-axis. So there's no y-intercept. All right, so let's just graph what we have. Put a vertical line at zero and two and a half. Zero, two and a half. And my horizontal asymptote, 1.5. It's probably going to look pretty similar to the other one. You're going to have three sections. We've created six, but we're only going to draw in, in three of them. First thing I'm going to do is uh, type it in. 
and I'll check the behavior on each side of the asymptotes, and that's pretty much enough to tell me what's going on. Um, so I don't have to keep scrolling. Can somebody just tell me the, um, the original problem? Thank you. Over 2x squared minus 5x. 2x squared minus 5x. All right, so let's check our table. Um, we know 0 is a problem. That's a vertical asymptote. I'm going to try negative 0.01. Okay, I'm at negative infinity. So on the other side of 0, where should I be? Positive infinity. So I'm not even going to check this time. Way down here, way up here. Okay, our other asymptote is 1, 1. 1.5. So let's check 1.49. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, something's wrong. Let's try 2.49. Okay, at 2.49, I'm at negative uh, 300 something. So 2.49 way down here. And the number just after 2.5, let's try 2.51. Way up at positive 300. All right. Now I know that I'm going to get closer and closer to 1.5. And I've got to stay in this section. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something like this. Okay, same deal in the lower left. I'm going to be getting closer and closer. Okay, notice we're never going to cross the y-axis because that's an asymptote. We never cross it. Now, the only thing I'm not really sure of is what's happening in the middle. So I've got two points. What I'm going to do is plug in 1 for x. Let's just see what I get for a y value. 0. Okay, so 1, 0 is a point on the graph. That's, that's helpful. Um, I'd say you really don't need much else. Just connect those points curved. Trying to make sure it looks like you're getting closer and closer to your asymptote. Okay, let's graph and see how we did. So there's our left, right, and middle. Notice the calculator has a little bit of a problem when the line starts to get really steep. It really um, it should be continuing it up like that. And also down like that. Okay, so any, uh, any questions on that one? It's not too bad. It's a little time consuming, but it's really not, it's not too hard to go through and graph them. Um, do you want me to do another one like that? This, this one would be pretty much the same thing. Okay, the only thing I want to ask, just by looking at it, where is my horizontal asymptote? Is it going to be at zero? Or is it going to be at a constant, like the last problem? It's going to be at zero. All I'm looking at is this. Degree in the bottom is bigger. I'm going to be left with an x in the bottom, Okay, with my end behavior model. Okay, so this one is similar to the first one we did. All right, so I think that's, um, that's a good place to stop for, for this section. Okay, tomorrow we'll, we'll look at what happens when the degree in the bottom is bigger. Those graphs get a little <coughs> bit more complicated, but I'm not going to let them get as complicated as they could. Okay, I'm going to try to keep them relatively simple. Okay, so the homework um, tonight is on 234. It's 1 through 7, just the odds. And then 9 through 12, 15, 17 to 22, 23 to 26, 29, and 33.